Welcome friends to another r slash I don't work here lady video. If you want to do next to no work at all but still help out, all you gotta do is hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. That said, our first story of the day is by Regal Reptiles. I don't work here. I work for a competitor of this store. I used to work for a Tesco's which has a very distinctive blue uniform. However, on the way home from work, I would occasionally shop at the local ASDA which has a very distinctive green and black uniform. On one occasion, I was walking around with my empty basket and a lady approached me to ask where the white vinegar was. I answered as I knew where it was. Later into my shopping trip, whilst walking around with my now full basket, the same lady approached me again. She stated that I was out of white vinegar. Not catching on to the fact that she thought I worked there, I told her that she should speak to an employee. To which she looked at me and firmly pressed her finger into my chest where my uniform said Tesco. She loudly said, well, you still have your uniform on. I don't care if you're on break. Go and find me what I want. To which I inform her that she was an ASDA and that I worked for Tesco. You'd think she'd be apologetic, but nope. She turned around, swore under her breath, and stormed off. I should also note that I saw her speaking to an actual ASDA employee and saw him check his PDA and shake his head. I can only assume they were out of white vinegar. If you had somebody come up to you and tap their finger right on the incorrect logo and claim that you work there and that you need to go fetch something for them, would you get sassy with them in return, give them a few choice words, or do you think you'd still be able to keep a cool collected head and just try to resolve the situation? Let me know what you would do in the comments down below. Our next story is by Richard N. Backer. I know you don't work here, but this was about 20 years ago when I just turned 40. It was in the UK, so everything is calm and polite. I was at an orange supermarket on the outskirts of Winchester, where they have a superb range of whiskies and some pretty decent wines. Or they did at the time. I moved away from the area not long afterwards. I had visited the wine section where I'd successfully basketed, is that a term? Half a dozen bottles of a wine to which I was slightly partial. Portuguese, red, I think it was a blend. Blends are best unless you're spending telephone numbers. I'd moved on to the whiskey section, where there were already quite a few blokes of a similar age and temperament perusing the nectar on display. I got chatting with one of said blokes on the finer point of Islay Malts. I favor Ardbeg, closely followed by Lafroig, as far as the active distilleries go. Some of the closed ones have awesome malts. Anyway, bloke notices I have half a dozen bottles of the same wine and started asking me about it. I told him it was way underpriced and was a good session wine. They could charge twice, maybe three times the price and I'd still buy it. Not exceptional, just very good for its class. Very quaffable and that he should get himself a couple of bottles. I took him to where the bottles were, but they were all gone. I insisted he take a couple of the bottles I had. He said, no, I'll just take one, you need those for yourself. I said, I'm not greedy and I insist you take two of my bottles. He'd need one bottle to decide if it was indeed quaffable, and a second bottle to sit back and enjoy. I had six bottles. I'd still have four after I'd given him two. Anyway, I convinced him to take two bottles from me. He was quite reluctant, it's the English way. We chatted a bit more about what whiskeys we'd bought, and then went on our way. Obviously, I never bumped into him again, but I'd like to think he liked my wine recommendation. Honestly, this is like a really lovely story. And honestly, if you're going to the store and you've got some time to kill, OP's the kind of person that you hope you run into if you're gonna have literally any kind of exchange at a supermarket. A great one with a great wine recommendation. This next story is by Alana Miles. Would you like your fries extra crispy? This happened to my dad a few weeks ago and I've been dying to share it because this never happened to him before. My dad works for a company that helps with rebuilding after a fire or natural disaster. A few weeks ago, a local restaurant caught on fire. Thankfully, it was after hours and no one was hurt, but there was no building left, just a big pile of rubble. So my dad gets there a little after sunrise, he's talking with fire officials, there's caution tape everywhere. As my dad's working, it's a little after 7 when this minivan just comes barreling into the parking lot. The window rolls down, and I hate using the term Karen, but that's exactly what she acted like. Hey, I need six sausage and egg sandwiches, three English muffins, and a really complicated coffee order that only a Starbucks barista is capable of making, stat. My dad, with all the patience of a saint, goes over to her car and says, Ma'am, I don't know if you can see, but there was a fire here. 
I can see that. Some of that equipment must be salvageable. Proceeds to point to non-existent kitchen and melted equipment. Dad considered for a moment. So you want me, a contractor, to go into that pile of rubble and make you some breakfast? Is that what you're saying? She says, well, duh, are you stupid? Ma'am, I'm beginning to think you're the stupid one. The lady tries to argue, but with his 60 years of wisdom, just walked away and let one of his younger co-workers deal with it. Dad said he heard shouting, turned around, and the lady sped off, never to be heard from again. Throughout the day, he did get people asking about the fire as the restaurant was a local favorite, but that was about it. In his 25 years of doing this, that was his first Karen. Pretty impressive if I do say so myself. That is definitely some kind of Karen that has a very set routine and is very insistent on having their way. This is probably the type of person that gets legitimately upset because they pulled into a supermarket parking lot and their usual spot is taken. The kind of Karen that freaks out because the milk all the way in the back doesn't have a later expiration date than the ones up front and they just need somebody to complain to about it. Our next story is by Pineapple Forward, Squidward, the hotel receptionist. This happened a few years ago, so my memory's a bit fuzzy. I was in a hotel in Spain, sitting in a hotel internet lounge. Now, I was aware staff would use the room and table I was sitting at occasionally, but for most of the day, it was free for all guests to use. I was sitting at a table using my laptop when someone approached me. Now, since I was using a computer and the tables filled with leaflets of places for tourists to go, Normally, I'd understand why someone might assume I was hotel staff. However, I was in holiday clothing. Shorts for swimming and a giant Squidward t-shirt that would be incredibly hard to miss. The guy asks for some information about a local attraction. Since I'm a guest with little knowledge of the area, all I could respond was with, Sorry, I don't work here. The guy then makes an annoyed huff and turns around to leave. No big Karen fight like most stories here. Just a confused tourist, I guess. Still, I can't imagine any hotel allowing their staff to wear a Squidward shirt when working, especially given his attitude towards work. I'll tell you one thing I know, Squidward doesn't care about the customer. He also thinks boulders are stupid. Definitely not employee-friendly attire. Our next story is by Glockout40. Wanted to share a story about a problem I used to have. So I live in West Virginia. I used to work for FedEx. Everyone is well aware of what a FedEx guy looks like, I'm sure. Shorts with reflective strips, polo with purple, black, and orange, purple lanyard with dirty badge in the case, hat with FedEx embroidered on the front, you get it. After work, I would regularly go to Walmart as it's on the way home, and I'd get something for dinner or whatever. I cannot tell you how many times I've had someone ask me what aisle X food is on, or if I could perform a price check or whatever. It was getting to the point where it happened so frequently that I stopped going to Walmart and I went to Kroger instead. Same exact issue. I'd go to get some sushi at the bar and someone would ask me to package up some yellowfin or some crap. I was 21 at the time so maybe it was my appearance? It was incredibly obvious that I was a FedEx driver shopping for food. This happened 30 plus times over the course of a year or two. Just discovered the sub and wanted to share. Yeah, you would have thought maybe this was like just an IQ lottery that OP kept winning going to Walmart, knowing how some of the clientele can be. But no, it just turns out if you're wearing any kind of official looking uniform, it doesn't matter who you work for, it doesn't matter what colors they are, people just refuse to acknowledge it, look past it, and think you work there anyways. This next story is by Right Reality. I just wanted to drill, not a police report. Alright, so a little backstory. This happened about four months ago. I had just finished an 11 hour shift and needed to stop at Home Depot to get a new drill. I just wanted to run in, buy it, run out and get home. Of course, it wasn't that easy. I had just gotten to the drills and was looking over the options in my price range when I hear it. Um, excuse me, where's the wax toilet rings? There's a few other people in the area, so I ignore it, assuming there's an employee nearby. It's important to add, as I work in traffic control and just got off the job site, I'm wearing high visibility pants, a high visibility vest shirt that says company name traffic control on the back, a radio with a shoulder mic, and a traffic control technician certification card displayed on my vest. The employees here wear orange aprons and normal clothes. Hello, do you want to do your job or just stand there looking at tools? At this point, I glanced around to see what was going on. 
I assumed some customer was berating an employee, which happens a lot at this location unfortunately. I was surprised, however, to see some 30-year-old guy in a white button-down shirt and tie looking at me like I'm stupid. Can I help you, I said, still not sure of the situation, but that seemed to tick him off. Yes, you can tell me where the goddarn wax rings are, he shouted. At this point, it clicked in my head what was going on. I'm sorry, sir, I started saying. I don't... I don't want to hear anything but an aisle number, he yelled, interrupting me and drawing the attention of a few other shoppers. Honestly, how did you get this job being so stupid? I tried again. I don't work. He cuts me off again. Oh my god, where are the wax rings? Now, I don't know why, but I got an idea in my head that I thought would be amusing, and at the very least, might get him away from me. I pointed behind him at a random aisle where wax rings almost certainly weren't in, and said, It's right there. Finally, how stupid can you freaking be, he yelled, huffing and storming off. I thought that was the end of it. I figured he'd realize they're not in that aisle, and then find an actual employee to ask. Nope. He came right back and started yelling that I don't even know how to do my job and that his best friend is the district manager and he'll have my job. During his yelling, I noticed a few shoppers staring at us. I just raised my hand, pointed to the same aisle as before, and said, They're right there, look, can't you see them? How stupid can you freaking be? I retorted, taking glee and throwing the last part back at him. But he wasn't amused. He smacked my hand down and shoved me, yelling something about stupid punk teenagers. That was a bad idea. I'm not a skilled fighter or super strong or anything, but I know when I can take someone. This guy clearly didn't. I punched him once, square in the nose, presumably breaking it, and he fell back, hitting his head on the concrete ground hard. Someone call the police, this guy just attacked me, he yelled. As the crowd nearby grew larger and larger, I was worried. Obviously it was in self-defense, but I kept thinking that I should have shoved him back and not punched him. I was worried that if he hit his head to the point it caused a lot of damage, I could get in trouble. A manager came over and asked what was going on. He started screaming that, This employee attacked me when I tried to ask for simple directions. Look what he did. By this point, blood is visible on the spot he hit his head, along with the pouring out of both nostrils. Who did, the manager said, puzzled and concerned, looking around at the actual employees, who were still on their way over to the commotion. Oh my god, are you all stupid? Him! He screamed, pointing at me. Um, he doesn't work here, sir, the manager said. The manager got on the radio for more employees, ignoring the man's insistence that I do, and tells me to follow him. He takes me to the security office and has me wait for the police. Luckily, multiple customers and the camera saw my side of the story, and since the police went to the injured person first to render aid, they also interviewed witnesses over there before coming to me. When they came in, I gave my side of the story. The police says it contradicts his version of events, but that it matches the witnesses statements. They said the guy was yelling that he wanted me arrested and locked up. That's when the manager pulled up the footage, which showed him hit my hand and shove me, and I only hit him after that, and one time. Also in my favor, I was facing him with the drill shelf behind me when he shoved me, so I was somewhat cornered. They then asked if I wanted to press charges, and since he wanted to get me arrested, I decided, heck yeah, lock his butt up. They arrested him, and a few months later, I found out he pled guilty and avoided jail time, but now he has an assault charge on his record. I honestly wouldn't have pressed charges if it wasn't for the fact that he wanted to press charges against me. I hope he learned his lesson and doesn't treat anyone that way again, even if they're a Home Depot employee. You would think and hope that these kinds of people would learn their lessons, but like, if they've gotten that far in life and they're treating people like that, Chances are they're just not going to learn that lesson anytime, but you can hope. And our final story of the day is by Digital Girly, giving her straight talk. I read a Barnes & Noble story this morning that reminded me of my own BNN experience. I was in the anime section when a little old lady asked me for a recommendation for her 13-year-old granddaughter. I steered her to an age-appropriate section since anime can be very risque or flat out too inappropriate for that age group. She gave her thanks, and I left. Another lady grabbed me as I strolled away and asked for help finding something. Since it was on the way to the escalators, it was no big deal to walk together, then point out what she was looking for. 
As I got close to the escalators, some nut job grabbed my arm and spun me around demanding help. Disbelieving that some random person would put hands on a stranger like that, I was stunned for a minute. Finally, I just said, look lady, I don't work here. She replies, then how come you were just helping those other ladies? I say because they asked me nicely and the answers to their questions were conveniently close by. She says, then why don't you help me? I say, you didn't ask nicely, laid hands on me, and in general, I find you to be a complete tweet. I left her standing there with a stupid look on her face. A simple but satisfying tale. I mean, hey, if somebody's grabbing you by the arm and yanking you around, you honestly have the right to be a little bit of a jerk to them. I appreciate OP telling it like it is and walking right out of there. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So of all these stories I've read today, which is your favorite and why? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't yet, if you could like and subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. Whatever you do, whether it's liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, all of it helps grow this channel and I appreciate the heck out of it. So until next time, I'll see you all tomorrow with some more stories.